Um, I'm interested to know, since you, okay, probably we're going to go chronologically, but now that you mentioned, what things did you learn in Colombia? I mean, this um, apart from dancing, <laughs> <laughs> salsa and merengue. So, oh, that's from my city. I'm from Cali. Ah, well, well, Caleño. All, all Latinos dance. I mean, what the deal with that? What's, yeah. I don't know. It's you know, <laughs> I was single then, so you know, <laughs> okay. that's the only way to get. Uh, I think that for me, Colombia was a big lesson because that, that was the first time that I saw um, how a nation can be divided. I, I, uh, sorry th mm. that I interrupt you, but it's important to mention when you were there. I was in the 1990s. Uh, that was a time of the, the 80s the, uh, and the 90s were mm. difficult. Yeah, this was the time of the um, when I was there at the end of the uh, you know the, the, cartel. area, the, the cartels. But still, uh, bombs were in the street and uh, the uh, personal uh, security was very very low. So you left Israel to a more dangerous place. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> I'm always telling people, you know, uh, Israel is a safe country. You know. Yeah. Believe me, uh, <laughs> really. If you look at the statistics, it's if one you, of the safest places you in compare. the world. Yes. How, how did you how did you um, understand the Colombian situation? What was the picture that you had? How did you see the problem? For me, it's purely economic. It's purely economic, and that's the, that's the tragedy of all South America, if I can say. You know, it's it's about the how to divide the, the wealth. Because uh, uh, Colombia is it's an amazing wealthy country. It's the division of wealth uh, that makes um, that makes the the problems or uh, that that Colombia was facing, and I think still, still. faces. Uh, so it's the division of wealth. You know, I, I come from Israel. Um, when I grew up in Israel in 1970s, 80s, I grew up in a nice city, nice neighborhood, Ramat Hashon, but you didn't see very rich people and very poor people. Most Israelis were middle class, up or down. Yes, I'm originally from South America, but I left very, very young, and I come from Uruguay. That also it doesn't have a lot of this, you know, uh, disparity. disparity. But we, when you arrive to Colombia and you see people that are, on one hand, extremely rich, absolute billionaires, very well, very well uh, educated, uh, very, very fine, and very, and then you go to the uh, to the poor parts, and you go to inland, and you see that there is really uh, the no absence of the absence of, of really I don't say equality because it's a democratic country and you know you can succeed in life and you can become but the division or the, the that that's really shocked me and I think that that's uh, um, that's something that uh, still still persists in South America in, in, in Colombia I took a path of you know the narcos or the the cartel that's a different path from from other countries uh, but the vivity of the of, of Colombia was amazing. You know, the, the, the joy of life, the music, the the, the, the everything else. It really, on the other hand, gives you a lot of hope. We we are told or we are said to be some of the happiest people in the world. It's just something uh, natural, I guess, right? <laughs> for you. But yeah. you you come from a middle class family, I guess, Fernando, right? Me, yeah. Was it, it dangerous to go out to the street? Where yeah, you we had bodyguards going to uh, university, yeah. uh, things like that, because. Yeah, you didn't know when something was gonna happen. Right. So you you watch Narcos on Netflix? No, I hate them. <laughs> no, yeah, sorry, no, you didn't. <laughs> no, no, I, because I feel that I <laughs> <laughs> you've been there. <laughs> no, it's like the Hollywood version, you know. What right. Can I say uh, no? <laughs> I have to tell you that I I saw the trailers and I thought it's not interesting. So on. What what kind of um, seeds uh, were planted during your time in Colombia that we could see today? So uh, yeah, so um, unfortunately, at the time, we did a lot of um, a lot of uh, cooperation in terms of security and in the army. You know, uh, that was one. Uh, if you remember later, you know, Israelis were involved, for example, in the uh, uh, not kidnapping but saving uh, Ingrid Betancourt, oh, yeah. uh, for example, and the not always in a, in a positive way. The uh, uh, in Is the, the the image of Israel in Colombia, because we are very much connected in that. I prefer to talk about, um, I did a lot of work with uh, Israelis that were kidnapped as well by the uh, FARC and the ELN, the two different um, guerrilla groups. And the, I worked for a year and a half to uh, try to secure uh, some guys that were kidnapped and they were released afterwards. And a lot of work in the field of uh, actually um, uh, 
uh, in milk production. Yeah. Uh, so basically, most of the milk production uh, in Colombia nowadays is based upon Israeli technology and Israeli. Well, my brother used to work for one of the largest milk <coughs> uh, manufacturers in Colombia, Alpina. Yeah, so we did something. Uh, Alpina was very high end and yeah. expensive. So how, how, how does that work? How does I mean, like, okay, so it's <laughs> government. Yeah, no, I'm not talking milk specifically, yeah, yeah. but like it's government. Exchange it's government technology. Government. It's government to cooperate. Absolutely. For example, this project used to call Mega Leche. Okay. Uh, like mega, mega milk. milk. <laughs> mega milk. And we brought some. Isra- First of all, a lot of Colombians came to Israel to study how, because you know, the Israeli cow is the most uh, rentable cow. You know, all right. In terms of how much milk. We produce from there. It's it's like five times more than really regular. Yeah, that's why is that? Because we treat that the cow as a, a, a resource, a resource that you have to uh, invest in, not just to put it and give milk. Uh, each ma- each cow in Israel have a sensor uh, that's to see how much salt it has, so how much water to bring, so how much it's food to bring. Something other places it. don't do. No. Okay. No. And you know that it just. I'm, I'm, this Just is my course. I'm going to be a diplomat. <laughs> this is my course about my country. So uh, <laughs> basically, uh, uh, and also, uh, you don't see cows in, field. in the field in Israel. Right. First of all, we don't have a lot of fields, but secondly, right. Right. we see milk or dairy as, a, as an industry. Right. We perfected it. In, in general, because yeah. of lack of resources, uh, we see agriculture as an industry. And therefore, uh, it has to be planned it has to be uh, well executed, and this is something we did in the north of uh, of Colombia uh, for the indi- for the poor people. How to get more profit out of it? How to, and it's more the production of milk. It's cooperativism, you know. If what you have, I, what yeah. I mean so what do we? How do we do it? No, I mean also like also like mm. where the government and business connect. Because there is a yeah. business side to this, right? Yes and no. Yes and no. I'm a diplomat. You know, I I always tell I'm, I'm like a Polish officer. I don't speak about money. It okay. has benefits, of course, right, because right. if you introduce a technology, we are expect them afterwards to buy it. It's not mm-hmm. a must, but you know, yeah. Right. I, I bring an Israeli uh, producer; he will bring the technology that he brings, and then somebody else will copy it. As for example, the drip irrigation, right? That it was an Israeli invented, and now actually, my cousin mm. went to study in Israel ah. uh, about drip irrigation. We're kind of famous yeah. for that, yeah. That's one yeah. I know. Yeah. And cherry tomatoes and stuff like that. Right. So this is what I remember. This is uh, the seeds that we are. Th- so now, uh, uh, the pr- I don't know if you know, but the prices of milk it went down dramatically because of that. Because you have more production and it's not centralized in some companies. So it's but it's, crazy, it's interesting yeah. what you're mentioning because, well, you lived in Colombia at a time where exactly. we also had to develop exactly. the same, mm-hmm. the same skills, the mm-hmm. same suspicions, or the same mm-hmm. kind of like. Mm. Is this going to be today? Is this going to be absolutely, absolutely? Yeah, I, I, so I can relate to. Yeah, yeah I live. I live yes. f- a few blocks from El, El Club El Nogal. That oh, was bombed. So, uh, and, um, and you not you are not get used to it. You know, you, you, I was in the army for five years, and I, I saw blood and I saw uh, stuff. But it's it's different, and and and, and mostly is you think about your family. Basically, uh, you don't think about yourself. The the. The thing that hits me the most is how arbitrary that was. Mm. It, there was not, yeah. there was not an enemy. Mm-hmm. Right. It was just population. Violet. Yeah. Population. Yeah. Just yeah. anybody. Mm. Right. It was just trying to destabilize the country. That that was the worst thing about. Uh, it. That <laughs>